What's happening, everybody? Trey here, joined by my dad, Sean. And today, reactions to the classics. Gonna be doing another song battle here. Today, we got Dark Globe by Sid Barrett against Life in Vain by Daniel Johnston. And I uh, want to shout out our longtime friend and patron of the channel, Fran, for suggesting this battle for us to dive into today, Dad. And uh, without further ado, man, we're just gonna get, uh, get diving into the, the great Sid Barrett. Yeah, we'll go with The Dark Globe. It's also known as Wouldn't You Miss Me. Recorded in June of 1969, released on his first solo album, The Mad Cap Laughs. And it was produced by David Gilmour and mm. Roger Waters, of course, of Pink Floyd. This was covered by R.E.M. I've never listened to any Sid stuff besides mm -hmm. Piper at the Gates of Dawn. Have you ever listened to this, Trey? Do you know any of his I, solo stuff? I haven't uh, yet. I, it's been on my you know list right. for a little while, but uh, I need to get to it uh, soon because I know a lot of people really do enjoy this uh, this record before you know afterwards you know kind of with the mental health uh, yeah. took yeah, him off stuff. off the rails a little bit. But uh, interesting here, this song's under two minutes, so uh, as always, got the lyrics pulled up and. Uh, just enjoy this and go to Life in Vain afterwards. Oh, where are you now? Pussy willow that smiled on this leaf. When I was alone, you promised a stone from your heart. My head kissed the ground. I was half the way down, treading the sand. Birds way, swing twigs, coffee brands around. Brandish a wand with a feathery tongue. My head kissed the ground. I was half the way down. Treading the sand. All right, Sid Barrett, Dark Globe, um, you know, short and sweet, but uh, Sid packed a lot of lyrics into this one, man. And yeah, uh, sure. I mean, arrangement wise, it really was just, uh, you know, his voice and, and that acoustic guitar bringing it. Yeah, that was it. And the acoustic guitar was played interestingly. It, it never seemed to quite match the rhythm. Mm -hmm. You know, it had this like... Yeah, it was a bit off kilter. Yeah, this disconnection, which made it work more because the lyrics itself kind of spin somebody down into that disconnection, mm -hmm. you know, obviously knowing the past Sid was on. But I think it shows you a lot about Gilmore and, and Waters, that how they felt about him. Oh, yeah. That even though they had to kick him out of the band, they're still helping him on this album. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. You know? And ironically enough, he... Uh, he I guess you could say opposite. I was going to say uh, Sid sounded like Roger, but uh, I guess it would be easier to say that uh, Roger Waters, I guess, sounded like Sid a little bit and is uh, the later Pink Floyd yeah, yeah, type of thing. Yeah, because Sid definitely sounds more refined mm -hmm. than he did in Piper's. No, and, you know, lyrically, you know, you kind of have some abstraction here, but at the heart, you have this guy who uh, I think is feeling, uh, as you mentioned, Dad, a bit disconnected. Yeah, I think uh, he's, he's like, he's, he's losing it. Man. Yeah, he says, when I was alone, you promised the stone from your heart. Um, I, my head kissed the ground. I was uh, half the way down, treading the sand. Um, please, please lift a hand. I'm only a person whose armbands beat. So you, yet again, from that line, kind of get that um, idea that, oh, I, I really need to reach out, need yeah. somebody to uh, help me. And then, you know, won't you miss me? Wouldn't you miss me at all? And then, you know, kind of knowing how Sid's life turned out, that takes uh, a bit of a, a different type of meaning as well. It, it does. That's what I think. Because, of course, too, he just says the same thing. But when the song ends, he says, I tattooed my brain all the way. Mm. Won't you miss me? Wouldn't you miss me at all? So a very 
good tune and, and you know glad that this one was brought so i could hear some sid no a hundred percent man definitely uh had the the man cap laughs on uh on, on my need to listen to list and uh now we're gonna go with another artist we haven't covered on the channel yet we got daniel johnston a guy i've heard about and i know who has kind of a a cult uh, type of following uh this is the track life in vain from the frankenstein love record in 1998 but that this was a live album that was recorded in 92 yeah. at the Houston Room. Yeah, and Daniel was an American singer-songwriter and visual re artist regarded as a significant figure in outsider lo-fi and alternative music scenes. Most of his work consisted of cassettes recorded alone in his home, mm. and his music was frequently cited for its pure and childlike qualities. He spent extended times in psychiatric institutions mm. and was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. He gathered a local following in the 80s by passing out tastes of his music while working at a McDonald's in Austin, Texas. His cult status was propelled when Nirvana's Kurt Cobain was seen wearing a t-shirt that featured artwork from Johnson's mm -hmm. 1983 cassette album, Hi, How Are You? Beyond music, he was accomplished as a visual artist with his illustrations exhibited at various galleries around the world. So we do see the connection, obviously, That's right. with Sid's mental health issues and Daniel's. <laughs> That acoustic again driving us. Now, friend, friend, always the the master of yeah, uh, he knows. pairing them up, man. Don't wanna be free of hope, and I'm at the end of my rope. It's so tough just to be alive. I feel like the living dead I'm giving it up so plain I'm living my life in vain And where am I going to? I gotta really try Try so hard to get by And where am I going? down and there ain't any love left around everybody wearing a frown waiting for Santa to come to town you're giving it up so plain you're living your lives in vain and where are you going so hard to get by and where are you going to flip on your TV and try to make sense out of that if we were all in the movie Maybe we wouldn't be so bored We're giving it up so plain We're living our lives in vain And where are we going to? You gotta really try Try so hard to get by and where are we going to? Goodbye. 
Daniel Johnston, Life in Vain. I uh, can see the similarities with Dark Globe Dad, uh, you mentioned at the start, that acoustic guitar driving it. Um, but uh, I thought the arrangement of this track was interesting too. Um, almost had a, a violin like. That's uh, what I was going to ask. I was going to guess. Almost like that a one? country type violin. Yes. <laughs> and, no, um, exactly. Almost like the fiddle type of uh, situation. Yeah. So, uh, what, whatever that instrument uh, might have been, I thought that uh, it added a, a bit of a, a dash of uh, sound that you, you didn't quite expect here. And, uh, you know, Daniel, a very. Uh, uh, very open with his feelings and thoughts and the lyricism as well. Yeah, I thought the lyrics are, are fire. You know, he starts right away. The, I mean, the very first line he says, don't want to be free of hope. And I'm at the end of my rope. It's just so tough to be alive when I feel like the living mm. dead. And then the chorus, I'm giving it up so plain. I'm living my life in vain, which obviously is where the title comes from. Where am I going to? I got to really try. I try so hard to get by. And where am I going to? So notice just letting you know, life is a struggle, man, no. to do anything. And I, I thought his voice is interesting i got used to it really quickly though mm -hmm. you know this is 1992 and for me trey obviously you weren't alive in 1992 but this sounds so 90s to me just yeah. in the way it's arranged and his delivery um just fantastic no yeah and as a guy who listened to a lot of uh you know emo type music mm -hmm. in the mid 2000s early 2010s type of thing you can see um you know some people who if, uh, whether influenced by Daniel or not, this type of style definitely, definitely. or you know, uh, vocal style um, had uh, had some legs uh, in that time period, man. But yeah, I was just a, uh, I always um, uh, you know enjoy when artists are so open and outright with their feelings and whatnot. It adds that authenticity whenever you know somebody's yeah. not trying to put on a front here, and uh, I, I think that. Um, you know the the melody kind of a uh, fit the fit the the situation quite well there. So, all that to say, Dad, it is now time to choose our winner here: Dark Glow versus Life in Vain. Um, I resonated more with Life in Vain, so I guess I'm gonna have to uh, give that the nod there. But uh, yet again, Fran chose a fantastic uh, little one-two punch here for a what, what a upset special because most people come in here. Oh yeah, no sin, don't know Daniel Trey. This was an easy win for me. For Mr. Daniel Johnson, yeah. I thought that song was great. Yeah, I, Not I that was really said, impressed. But I mean, I thought that song was great. <laughs> I, don't, I don't throw around that term very often on this channel, but yeah, that was a great song. But I mean, nothing against Sid. Sid's was nice as well. But yeah, Life in Vain. A winner. Mm. Yeah, man. Uh, and of course, we'd like to know your thoughts. Be sure to let us know your winner down below. Give Fran some love for bringing this battle. And if you'd like to bring us a battle, you can check out our Patreon page, which is linked down below. And we'll also be at the end screen along with another video that you might enjoy. But dad, that wraps it up for us here today. It does. And until next time, y'all, thanks so much for watching. Happy listening. And we will see you.